All right, today we're going to try to look at this, these sensors on the side of this DPF system. I've already kind of unloosened everything because it was a bit of a chore. There's two, I think these are half inch. Well, one was nine sixteenths, and this one was one half. Now, again, I haven't had this truck very, very long, so I'm finding out a lot of new stuff about what was done to it. So we had a nine sixteenths or one half, or maybe either one, and it's going to, it's these two. So I took the step off. This is a simple one because it's kind of a date. It's a day cab. And this is the hard part. They replaced this right before I bought the truck because this was really rusted out. And I see why this little blast or heat shield for the DPF system back there. It gets crazy, crazy hot in there, especially when it's doing the extra regions like I've been doing lately. So that's what it looks like. This is a new one, but already in, I don't know, a year and change, like they didn't even have all these bolts in. Like there was only about four that's really attached. This one was really tough to get out. I actually had to pull it out with the pliers. I'm about to put a new one in probably. Um, but set, it's six holes right there on this one. And they're like nine sixteenths, one half or whatever. So this is all pretty straightforward. Then I took this blast shield off, or what I call it. Shield, whatever. And see, this was part of it right there. And this one wasn't even a, it had already been heated up and so many times, I guess, or not even that many times. It was already punched a hole through that heat shield thing. You can see here, if I ever decide to clean the filters on this thing, well, I shouldn't say if, but when, it's gonna be an issue. I'm about to replace everything because you can see how corroded this is. I can get the camera, the camera right without shadowing it. See right there, I might circle it on the video later. But anyway, it looks like these are inlet and outlet knock sensors. Wrong. These are temperature sensors for the diesel particulate filter system. A minimum of three of them on this truck. At the time of this video's recording, Punchy didn't know the names of all the sensor components in this area. Forgive our mistake in speaking. The NOx, or nitrous oxide inlet and outlet sensors, are not pictured here. More on that later. Some of these sensors I don't know about, but this one I do know, I recognize it because I bought it without even having opened this yet. I know they say don't swap out parts just to swap them out, but this is one time I'm gonna have to disobey that because really I know what this DPF, DEF, all this stuff, just getting it checked out, you're getting into four figures right there. So that's the issue. So I'm gonna try a few things myself, like checking harnesses, wiring, I was told to do that by some people knowledgeable about this stuff. Um, but this is the sensor I'm looking at. I think this is a pressure sensor. And it looks exactly like the one I have in the box there, which I'm about to go grab right now. I'm gonna, this looks right, it's right here on the, on the side of the step. Unlike some of the other models that I've seen or videos where it's kind of back here. So you gotta crawl under and get over to right here, or you might be able to reach it from here, but it's over here. This one is, everything is right here, apparently. I know there's some other wiring back there um, a lot more investigation to do. But again, you can see how heat corroded all this stuff is. Like once I start messing with this, taking this apart, it's gonna be all new clamps, all new bolts, everything. So I'm, I'm kind of getting my, my head prepared for that because it's coming if you've got this system. But anyway, let me go grab this sensor here and we're gonna swap it out real quick right before we take this load. And hopefully it will help with the regen issues that it's been asking for. All right. Uh, one one man I respect his knowledge greatly. He said, "Don't open boxes when your hands are all greasy." I'm, I guess that's another advice I'm about to skirt around today because we're kind of in a time crunch. And right there, you can see how this is going to match up with the new one I'm about to put on. That's how we go, like this. It's going to end up being like this. At least that's what it seems. All right, let me go ahead and get this thing off of here because I'm trying to get out of town right here. And I've heard a highway out there, the big highway is all clogged up with construction. So you know how that goes if you're a driver. You need to get out where you can. Every few minutes makes a difference. All right, this is looking like a 10 millimeter. I tried three eighths and seven sixteenths. Did not quite fit this one. So it's uh, 10 millimeter is the right fit. Like it's just those two, gotta be careful. 
So I need to squeeze, squeeze and release. I see a zip tie right there, which is probably not a good thing. So hopefully this is gonna connect better when I put this one on. So take this plug out, take these two plugs out. I think it's squeeze and release, and then 10 millimeter. Okay, I see the problem here. Hopefully uh, my camera work is not too shoddy here. But right, that's why they have the zip tie here because it's supposed to be a little slide. I would, if you saw our other videos or other videos like this, you'll notice a little slide plug right there. It's gonna go up or down. I don't know which way it's gonna go right here, but it's supposed to go in there. And that's what, that, it's this right here. It's just like this one, but it's missing here. So they put a zip tie. Somebody obviously ripped this out. And now I've got to deal with this. So they got a little zip tie right there. That might be part of the issue with this, this whole truck. Because I've noticed the engine light has been wonky ever since I got the truck. The truck one ran fine for a long time or, you know, a year or whatever. And now we're having all these issues. And this might be the cause of that first engine light. And now we're here. We're asking for regens and... Right, so I get to see this from the back side here. And you can't, it looks like you can't just yank stuff out. This is what happened with right here where they had the zip tie, I think. And these two little ports or whatever, right there, these right here, it looks like you got to squeeze it or push it, squeeze it, push it up, and then pull it down. So it's kind of weird. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it on the camera here. Let's see. All right, so you're gonna see back here, let me see if I can zoom in on this thing right here. I got one front side, one the back side, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But right here, you can see as I'm squeezing from the back, I'm pushing right here on that, on the other side, I'm pushing that like a button. And as I do that, these two little pincers or like little ant pincers look like, they start moving. If I can do it again, I might not be able to. see if you can see it moving right there but in some way you're gonna push it in and then push it up so i can't do that with one hand so i'm gonna put the camera down there i got it fully open as far as i can get it open but i still having trouble i don't want to break anything of course because you know i got something to do in like 30 minutes i want to break anything right here I have to do much more twist ties or anything so i'm gonna take my time and now i'm gonna pause it so i can get it off safely okay i was trying to do a bunch of Prying and all that stuff, or I use the I use the um, these little pliers here to poke. Once I push the button in, I would try to poke the pincers from the other side. Is what I was trying to do because I thought it was kind of tricky. Push up and push down maneuver or whatever I was trying to do. But I tried the other one. It looks like I just need to work it out, wiggle it out slowly without trying to break. Because I, I, I can see if I mess these up, I'm in big trouble or anything over here. So that's what we're gonna to try to do. So I think we got this off now. Let me get the old new one on. All right, so the old one's off. That's the old one. I mean, you can't tell if anything's wrong with it, but I'm gonna put the new one on. And I'm gonna do it in exact reverse order. Put the bottom in. I'm gonna screw it in with the uh, two bolts there and that little plate. A little plate right there. And then I'll I'm gonna have to figure something out with this. I may have an extra tab somewhere. Unbelievably, I may have that. So we're gonna check on that. All right, so we got a new zip tie on. I definitely wanna try to find a little clip because I think that's more official. Probably gonna hold it better. You know, the plastic may melt over here, but you know, I might be wrong about that. Just wanted to be official. So everything's back in place and um, I'm probably gonna run this logo with a close eye on this area. Gonna see, we're gonna go fire it up now. See if I even put together everything right. And we're gonna get ready to get out of here shortly. All right, we started up fine. Oh, the cold went away. So as soon as I turn the camera on, all right. That might've been part of this. That one little cold, that's extra cold that's been popping up. The one on the left right there, that's like the normal one. That's telling you something's wrong, but you don't have to be in, in peril or anything. But that second yellow one, okay, we watched them kind of close. That one was on and then it just popped off. I'm gonna see if it comes back on. Uh, while the air builds up. Meanwhile, I may try to put on this 
airbag that I got back there. That might be a good idea. And Choi found someone selling these sensor clips for Cummins ISX engines, on Amazon. We couldn't find these for sale anywhere else. At least, not separately. We called this dealership and found out that the only way to get one of these clips was to buy the whole wiring harness which would run $300 to $500. That would include the clip that we wanted. Not a good business move at this time however. The one Amazon seller had them available for about $0.50 cent a piece. The catch was, we had to pay $22 for shipping. Well worth it. We needed one for this repair, but went ahead and got four of them since the shipping cost would stay the same. The clips came in, no problem. One fit perfectly. The new differential pressure sensor was now fitted correctly, and the truck began asking for regenerations on its own for the first time in weeks. The engine started behaving more as it should. Fuel efficiency slowly improved. No time to pat ourselves on the back though. The codes are less than before but there are still a few. Next step is cleaning the filter, and more than likely, replacing both of those NOx sensors. BRB, 